There's a special badge in the video game Call of Duty that's really hard to achieve. It's when you have to kill someone five times in a row in a single match in order to earn it. Now, if you're able to kill the same person five times in a match, you're having a pretty good match. But it's especially difficult to do this five times in a row. And on one fateful eve, a few years back, Noob Hunter 2008 not only achieved that once, but twice against me. <sighs> Noob Hunter, my arch nemesis. I don't know who you are, but one day I will find you and I will tell your parents about your potty, potty mouth. Now, putting aside the likely fact that 2008 probably is a reference to their birth year, there's no steeper learning curve than the world of online gaming. And if you've never played any kind of multiplayer video game, I highly suggest you try it. It's like 5D chess, strategy on steroids, the best way to approach a map, the right loadout, the right character, stay together here and spread out over there. It's endless combinations to try and outwit your opponent. And let me tell you, I feel like I'm pursuing a quantum physics degree when I put in the hours on YouTube to help me get there. There's so many things to get right in order to succeed. Working on your KD ratio, the right ATS setup, even adjusting the sensitivity of your actual controller. And when you're doing this, you can't help but ask, who are the best COD players? The best learners, of course. The ones who can take new information and adapt to it the quickest. Because just when you think you've figured out the playbook for success, the strategy completely turns around and you've got to figure out the new rules. Talk about your VUCA world. This is the workforce of tomorrow, by the way. Well, today actually. This is how they learn. Amazing feedback cycles, just-in-time learning, and an amazing social community around it too. We've all got clear goals and clear insight to help us get there. This is a data-driven learning culture, and no one is afraid of it. Bring that closer to home and, well, we've got our own goals to worry about. Am I becoming a better leader? Am I doing this correctly? We're all looking for whatever help we can get to achieve any of those goals, whether it's about taking the next step in our career or defeating a certain opponent online. Why do we never think of data as a learning advantage? In fact, why are we so afraid of data in general? Perhaps we all know why and we just don't want to talk about it. Well, you can thank Noob Hunter 2008 for this then, because we're going to talk about it. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm an enterprise digital learning leader spending over a decade helping some of the world's biggest organizations transform how they view digital learning. I'm obsessed with the idea of modern learning and how we can use digital, the content, the technology, the design, to truly help people, organizations, and digital learning leaders like you be at their best. Welcome to Digital Learning Done Right. All right, well, let's dive in. Our big fear of data likely stems from the fact that so much of our world is, well, we're the stuff factory. All right, people, listen up. The goal is to make this stuff and push it out there and make sure everyone has taken it. Got it? Good. Meeting adjourned. And yet, for all the stuff we produce, what are we looking back on and saying, that worked? Or looking ahead to and saying, what does this need to be? Well, how could we? We have zero inputs to inform any of these decisions. But why do we refrain from doing this? Here's my theory, at least. Data is Pandora's box. And once we open it, it can and will hold us accountable. And well, that's a little scary, isn't it? But isn't that the whole point? The pursuit of meaningful data is the pursuit of why we are really in this profession. Because we're trying to help people. And there's so many ways that data can help. To improve our experiences, to make them more efficient, to decide whether something should be bigger or smaller or better, or better yet, be nothing at all. 
I know, we're afraid of what data could mean for our everyday activities. Will people finally clue in to that big secret that it's actually really hard to isolate the effects of learning on impact? Yeah, maybe. It's our little data problem, the implications of what it means for, well, everything. Ironically enough, we're so early in this game that we don't even have actual data problems yet. You know, privacy, ethics, big data. There's a maturity curve here, and well, our first step is to even get on that curve. But we need to stop being so afraid of opening that box. Thinking and talking in terms of data is really intimidating. It's a big term. <laughs> I'll be honest, sometimes I'll just slip in the word data in the middle of a meeting to make myself sound smarter. Oh, come on, like you've never... It has a certain gravitas to it, but that also brings a lot of pressure with it as well. But I'm not a data scientist. I'm not a technical expert. I just have a passion for knowing whether what I'm doing actually works. And that's just the whole point of data. But maybe we just need to stop saying the actual word for a moment and just simplify. Simplify to what you're actually trying to achieve. Focus on just posing questions, things you wish you knew in your role, like if people actually cared about learning objectives, or if people prefer 10 minute chunks or five minute chunks of training. Start by laying out the most critical questions that you're obsessed with and try to find answers to them. You can start small, do a little A-B testing, something that happens in the marketing world all the time. If we include an image in our post, is it less likely or more likely to get clicked on? Start small and move from there, and just go with your comfort level. Take a user-driven perspective. Ask your people what data they would be interested in to help them achieve their goals. It's not like the Call of Duty developers are sitting around pushing out tips and tricks. This is a community of people who are self-organizing to help each other get better, and they know the data they want. Your learning interventions are simply outputs. So why not optimize your outputs with the right inputs? Okay, Josh, I want this. I'm on board. But all I can do is track completion. How can we ever be data savvy like that if that's all the technology I'm working with? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a tough one. But I also think that technology can be a trap for us. We think that, oh, well, the technology isn't there. Our hands are tied and all of a sudden we can't be data driven. But believe it or not, a data driven learning culture doesn't start with technology. It starts with a collective want to be more impactful. Yes, we'll get to that completion challenge at the right time, but the first step is getting your organization to understand that completion alone is not a meaningful enough metric to add value to the conversations you're having. When you're building, design with data in mind, and it can be as analog as you want it to be. Do it at the beginning too, don't leave it for the end. Once you've got your team asking the right questions, the decisions around technology will naturally follow. First, you want to get your organization to the point where it realizes it simply can't move forward without more robust technology in order to keep up with the data you need to deliver impact. We talk so much about how L&D doesn't have a seat at the big table, but that's because what are you showing up with? You need to earn that seat. And you do that by saying and showing that you care about impact. You care about improvement. Taking data seriously in your organization is not a technology challenge. It's a cultural one. It's about embarking on a journey to say that L&D is more than just a course creator, but actually makes the organization smarter, better. We're so disconnected from the impact that we forget that we can actually help influence it. Stop being afraid of data and dive into the amazing possibilities you have with these new insights. Start having more data-driven conversations in your organization. And of course, don't say the D word if it scares you. You don't need the technology right this minute. It'll come. What's more important is that you're finding ways to make experiences and environments more data-rich so that you can start learning how to make learning more effective and efficient. Normalize a culture of data-driven learning. It'll change everything. And Noob Hunter, if you're listening, I demand a rematch. But only on a day when you're not playing so well.
That's all for today. If you enjoyed this, tell a friend, share it with a colleague, and come find me on LinkedIn if you're looking to fight me, or if you can help me find who Noob Hunter is. Got an idea for a future episode? Let me know. Or go to digitallearningdoneright.com. That's digitallearningdoneright.com. And drop an idea in our suggestion box. Next time, we'll talk about my favorite meme, L&D of the future, and buying a new hat rack.